So you've been training jujitsu as a hobbyist for maybe fun and fitness. All of a sudden you start to hit this brick wall. You feel like you're not progressing. Well, there are usually a couple of things that are happening on your journey that once you're aware of and you can make the appropriate steps, you will start to see your progress start to skyrocket. In this video, I want to cover what I call the three L's that start to keep people stuck the most, especially as a jiu-jitsu hobbyist. And then we'll go over some solutions that we can start to work on for each one of these moving forward. How's it going, everyone? My name is Chasen Hill. I am a jiu-jitsu black belt. I've been teaching and training now for close to 15 years. So if you guys like this kind of content, make sure you hit the like button. Also hit the subscribe button and hit that bell icon. That way you are notified whenever the latest video comes out. What are these three L's that tend to keep jujitsu students stuck? The first L is what I call lack of consistency. The second L is the lack of focus. And then the third L is the lack of know-how. These do tend to happen in a progressive order, like one, two, and three. Usually if we can fix one, then we can start to fix them all. So if you are having a problem with all of them, this would be the order of operation that we would need to follow first. Let's talk about the lack of consistency. So first let's define what it means to be consistent in a jujitsu training environment especially if you are a hobbyist. How I define consistency, being an instructor, is a student who is training at least once to twice a week without long duration of breaks. So for example, a very standard hobbyist would train maybe two to three days a week, very, very consistently, and they are not taking big chunks of gap off in between their training. This obviously is going to cause you to start to plateau or not feel like you're progressing. If you're a hobbyist and you're training two or three days a week for maybe one or two months, and then you go maybe one month without training at all, or maybe you only train once or twice in a whole month, that is not being very consistent in your jujitsu training. We obviously have to be on the mat to make consistent progress. The most common question I get when I talk to students about this is, what is a healthy balance? How many days a week should I be training? I always like to tell students one day a week is better than no days a week. Is it the best progress you're going to make in the world by only training one day a week? Absolutely not. But you know what doesn't make any progress? Training no days a week. Jiu-Jitsu students I have tend to see is they have a all or nothing approach. What I mean by that is they're like, if I don't train four days a week or five days a week, then I'm just not going to train at all because what's the point? I'm going to get my butt kicked. I'm not going to see any progress. I'm never going to be any good. And then they tend to kind of take that self pity route. And so they just throw their hands up in the air. If jujitsu really means something to you and you really have a desire to learn jujitsu, well, we have to start off by making things consistent. Just because you're training one day a week, it doesn't mean you have to stay training one day a week. You can start to up it. You can start to increase it. But when you are so inconsistent and then you say, okay, well this week I'm going to go from training no days a week to five days a week. And now you're trying to create all this drastic change and you're trying to adjust your daily life schedule. That is not necessarily an easy change to make. Start with one day a week. And then if you find like more time in your schedule, then go to class, but you have to make it easy. So start off with one day a week. Once you do that pretty consistently for a month, then try to add a little bit more complexity, add two days a week, make it a little bit more challenging. And that's how you can gradually actually increase. And this is not a crazy thought or a crazy plan. We tend to have like an all or nothing approach in jujitsu. That's usually what I see from my students. What is an ideal time frame that I have seen jujitsu hobbyist students make like significant improvement? Like what is the standard schedule? If they can be training three days a week, very consistently, you will make really, really good progress, especially when you start to combine it 
with the next thing that we'll talk about, the the focus aspect here relatively soon. But at least if you're on the mat training three days a week on a regular basis, you will start to see progress and that is a good goal to reach for. So right now, think about it. If you're not very consistent in your training, which we defined what that was, and you're wanting to become more consistent, the end goal should be three to four days a week. You can just cold turkey you know, drop everything what you're doing and just instantly start training three or four days a week like that, more power to you. But most of the time students can't do that. So I encourage you be that really mindful and slow and methodical approach because that's going to have a bigger payoff in the long run. Let me know down in the comments below. What do you think is some of your biggest problems as a jujitsu hobbyist? What do you think is slowing your progression? Let me know down in the comments below. Now let's move on to the second L called the lack of focus. Two progression paths it can go to. The first one is a lack of focus when it comes to a training goal or what we're trying to currently accomplish in jujitsu. And then we also have a lack of focus in the actual training environment or how we are training jujitsu. When we talk about having a goal in jujitsu, it's basically what do you want? What do you want to accomplish? What are you wanting to improve? What are you actually training for? Outside of the facts of just fun, fitness, and self-defense, those things are going to come from training. But when we talk about a student that is not progressing or they feel like that they're not progressing, those internal values are fantastic. And that's what maybe keeps you on the mat. But when we talk about needing to get better in the sense that I want to or how I want to improve, it, having a focus is going to be 10 times more effective than not having a focus. If you tell me like, Chase, I don't like having focuses. It doesn't make jujitsu fun. Unfortunately, if you're wanting to progress quicker, then you have to put in more effort. And that just doesn't mean like training effort or like physical effort, but I mean like effort into actually how your jujitsu is going to improve. If you're just showing up to class and letting the instructor teach the move and you only follow the drills that they do and you're just kind of mindlessly going about jujitsu, there's nothing wrong with that. But yeah, the guy that puts in more effort on the back end that's actually thinking about their goals, really intentionally training, doing what they need to do that's what's best for them, is probably going to improve faster. That's not crazy logic. Having a more nuanced goal or actually having a goal is very, very important. When it comes to the training aspect, being disciplined and being able to actually train what the goal is, is important. Sometimes students will say, well, man, I suck at escaping the mount. I really need to get better at that. When they actually step on the mat to start training, they do nothing but try takedowns and they do nothing but try to get on top and uh, get to people's back. Well, if you're wanting to get better at the mount escapes, you have to actually be in the bottom of the mount. So you have to be disciplined in the actual arenas that you're wanting to train and improve. Let's talk about the goal aspect and we'll show how this kind of blends in together with the training. What I like to tell students is that there are three types of goals that you can really have. External goals, such as like training for competition, whatever those rules are, whatever that scenario is, whatever skill level you are, what you're gonna be doing in the actual training gym is going to prepare you for that competition, hopefully. So that should really make your focus in what you are training very directed. Oh, competition's coming up? Go to the gym and training. I'm training my game plan. I'm training these areas that I need to improve. I'm trying to understand the points more or whatever you're training for. So they very much go hand in hand. The next suggestion I have is if you're not a competition person, because a lot of hobbyists are not, or they just don't compete very often, so they don't like that as a sole goal, is pick a skill and then really focus on improving that for at least one month's time span. It can take a little bit of time to see any kind of significant change in a skill, and so you need to actually give it time to marinate, to bake in, and usually just training it for one week, you're just now starting to get the hang of the areas you're trying to improve. And so now you need to go back to the drawing board, maybe watch a couple instructionals or watch some YouTube videos about how to make some adjustments. Then you go back into the training room and you're using it as a lab 
to be a scientist and experimenting. You have a hypothesis and you're like, maybe this will happen if that happened. You can do that with very directed by picking a skill. You could pick something like pen escapes. You could pick something like guard passing. You could pick something like takedowns. Like there are all these different kind of avenues in jujitsu that you can have a directed focus. In my program that I teach my students online, I actually kind of make them do a skill assessment. They have to go through and rank what I call the 15 essential skills, and then they will pick out kind of the core skills that they are wanting to work on over the next year. And then we create a plan that's going to direct them toward making those improvements overall. And then the last option that you could do with the goal is going to be, well, I don't know. If, if you don't know, or if you have no desire and you're not sure, should you do a competition? Should you do a skill? That's something that you should probably really, really think about because that's what's probably keeping you stuck. The fact that you just don't actually have a goal and you don't have a focus. Picking either one skill or picking a competition date, that's a very easy thing to be able to do that can significantly direct your focus and make you start to improve. Now we have made it to the third L, the lack of know-how. What does it mean of the lack of know-how and why is that potentially hindering my progress? You just may not know how to train for a competition. So if that is one of your external goals, so you just don't use that as a goal because you lack the know-how, or maybe you have a skill that you want to improve that we talked about earlier, but you lack the know-how of which areas or which techniques or what things you need to be focusing on in order to improve it, or you lack the know-how of actually how to structure your training in a way that's going to be most beneficial to you. So it's great if you are on the mat training and you have goals, but if you don't have the know-how of actually how to do it, that can be a problem. It's one thing to say, I want to get good at pin escapes, but how do you actually train in a way that maximizes and you take the opportunity to optimize your pin escapes every single time that you're training? Some people will call this intentional training or mindful training. Challenge yourself in specific ways that make you basically focus on an area, but all of those things require know-how and they require discipline on your part because I can't tell you guys how many times I've had students that I've taught this stuff to and then it's almost like they go on autopilot and they just forget their goals while they're training. They forget how they're trying to go about it. The way that I teach my students to do this is going back to that skills that they have to pick from earlier and whenever they create a plan, I make them select a set amount of actions that they need to accomplish basically every time they hit the mat. So for example, if I had a student who was wanting to be able to escape the mount position and that was their goal, I make them say, well, I need to escape the mount position at least X amount of times tonight, or I need to be in the mount X amount of times. And so what you're doing is you're creating an anchor point that you can focus your attention on that really makes you thinking about that during that training aspect and that you can do that in a live training around no matter if you're the worst person or if you're the best person in the gym, easy ways to really be focusing on training for what you need. The next thing is talking about studying. Maybe you want to get better at your mount escapes, but you haven't been training that long, you only know a few techniques that aren't really working enough, well, go out and use these amazing resources like YouTube and instructionals and use your coaches and figure out the know-how. There is a wealth of resources online. It used to be that whenever you were training back in the day, you went to class not only to train and to improve your skills and to sharpen your sword, but because that was the source of the knowledge, like you, you, there was no internet. You can maybe find a VHS tape or a guy that had trained with a guy to show you information. So you went to class and that was the only time you were going to learn something. You had to be in a lot of classes in order to get all the information. Nowadays, you don't have to do that. There are great jujitsu instructors out there online that have a lot of great information, a lot of great technical information and, and skills out there that you can be studying and learning. So if you don't put in the effort to seek the knowledge, then yeah, that's probably gonna slow down your journey a little bit. Usually when I have a 
jujitsu student hobbyist who comes to me and they're like, man, I'm not improving. I'm not happy with it. I ask, are you consistent in your training? And if the answer is no, then we have to start there. I have to make you consistent before I can even give you a goal to focus on or even teach you how to intentionally train because that's just wasted effort if you're not actually going to be on the mat training. Once we get the consistency a little bit straightened out, then we can go and address the lack of focus, either no goal or a poor goal, maybe one that's not the best for them. And then we go over how we can improve our focus in training. How do I actually create parameters and conditions that challenge me to achieve my goal, whether that's for a competition or whether that's for improving a specific skill. And then the last one is saying, okay, now do you know how to do this? Do you actually know how to escape the mount? Do you actually know how to go about these aspects? Do we need to cover this in a little bit more detail? Do we need to improve that for you? Do I need to give you some homework to focus on? This also could be solo drills or watching competition, right? There's a lot of ways to maximize and increase your know-how. So hopefully you found this information very helpful. If you guys like this information, I literally teach this in a lot more in depth in my online program that I help students who really are struggling start to get a lot more focused in their jujitsu journey. We go through, we start to assess where you're at and we figure out where is the best place for your jujitsu to go and how do we get there the fastest. If you are interested in that, I'm enrolling new students right now. You can book a time down there to chat. With that being said, I want you to check out this next video that's gonna pop up right here and I'll see you guys in the next one.